So we have some special guest speakers and afterwards we have a live cooking demonstration, which I'm sure you all smell the wonderful cooking smells from Rhonda. Um, and you're welcome to, to tour and shop at the farm stand afterwards. So for those of you who have not met me today, my name is Stephanie Perks. I am the co-director with Kim Ferrara. She's my partner in crime. She unfortunately couldn't be here today, um, but she sends her regards and says hello to everyone here. So actually, when, when Kim and I first uh, started working together with the city of New Bedford and Mass in Motion, uh, we would often you know, have our team meetings and of course get sidetracked. Um, and we'd have these brainstorming sessions where we would come up with what our dream program would look like. You know, in a perfect world, what would have the biggest impact on improving local food access in our city? And I can r vividly remember, you know, sitting down with Kim and we would talk about buying a giant yellow school bus <laughs> and traveling around to all the farms, hanging out with farmers and buying produce and coming back into the city to sell it. And we really, really want to do what Rhonda's doing here today with the cooking demonstrations and really just build a culture around, food cult a food culture around healthy eating and local agriculture. And that was five years ago today. Not today, but it was five years ago. And so we're here to celebrate our mobile farm stand, which is really exciting. And I should point out, we're not driving a school bus, which I'm pretty sure no one wants Kim and I driving a school bus. And Dan's pretty excited he's not driving one either. So at Coastal Food Shed, our mission is effectively demonstrated by our mobile farm stand program. And that's bringing local, healthy, affordable food directly to people into our neighborhoods and community events and connecting them to our far farming community. So of course, we couldn't do this without all of the wonderful support from our funders and sponsors. And I'd like to go through and thank all of them who have made it possible um, for our farm stands today. So about four years ago, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare Foundation took a chance on us and funded one of our projects, the Farm Share Program, that has morphed into what is today our, our mobile farm stand. And I know from everyone at Coastal Food Shed, we are incredibly grateful for all that you have done for us and your commitment to bring healthy food into the community of New Bedford. They have not only supported us over the last four years, but have committed to supporting us in the future in so much more ways than just a funding capacity. The team here today, we have Mike, Karen, Henny, and Kim, are really an extension of our, our Coastal Food Shed family, and we can't thank them enough for everything that they have done for us. Um, I'd like to also thank the Elma Del Mar Charter School um, and the Mifflin Memorial Foundation. We have Becca here today um, for their support in not only hosting our mobile farm stand for their scholars and their families, but also supporting our cooking demonstrations and our staff and this beautiful trailer that you see here today. We'd also like to thank the Community Foundation of Southeastern Mass and the Agnes B. Lindsay Foundation for providing the funds to purchase our truck to pull this beautiful trailer, because that wouldn't be possible. Because if anyone saw our 2002 Econoline van last year, which had about 270,000 miles on it, you would understand that we really needed that improvement. Um, I'd also like to thank our guests and funders today, Mayor John Mitchell and the City of New Bedford, who we could not do a lot of this work in the city without. You have been there since the very beginning, and we really appreciate that. The Department of Agriculture Resources and Commissioner John LeBeau, thank you for all of your support. And Representative Bill Strauss, again, has, I was working with him with the Food Security Network and has been there again since the very beginning. So thank you again for your support. We'd also like to thank, um, give a special thanks to all of our Coastal Food Shed sponsors. Um, and here today we have um, Hawthorne Medical, um, Ka Kathleen Murray, and Edible, Edible South Coast and South Shore, um, Lori Hepworth and Michael. Um, we also have Bay Coast Bank, Julie Ramos Gigliardi, um, and we have Tatro Insurance, and also Netto Insurance as well. So as you can see, there are a lot of people that make this farm stand uh, possible, and we wouldn't be here again without those support. So let's please give a round of applause for all of our funders and sponsors. So last but certainly not least, we have to thank the person who actually runs our farm stand program, Dan King. He is our farm stand manager. Yes. Um, so our success, I, I wish you guys could have seen what we had last year. I mean, it was a pilot program, but we really just had a tent set up and a couple of tables. And we're really trying to figure out what worked, what didn't. Um, and 
you know, I shared that with Dan and he came in and was just like, this is what we're doing. And he just really has transformed it into what it is today. Um, and so there's so much that goes into operating this farm stand. Um, but I actually think he just spends most of his time hanging out with farmers, so, <laughs> which is pretty good. So I'm gonna let Dan up here and he's gonna tell you a little bit more about our farm stand past season. Thank you all today for coming out. I'm a little bit taller, not much taller. I also don't like microphones. Uh, so <laughs> forgive me if I back up from it. Um, as Stephanie said, I'm Dan King, uh, and I am the manager of the mobile farm stand. There's like no one in front of me, you're all over there. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I guess the, the best thing to do is explain like what it is and how it works, right? Um, so the mobile farm stand is a way to bring local food into communities where it's not grown. So I guess is the best way. Make local food easier to, to buy, easier to eat, and easier for farmers to sell. So what I do is a pretty easy job. I drive around all day and pay people money. Uh, <laughs> it's, there are worse things in the world than going to farms and paying people. So on the tables over there, you'll see there's a variety of fruits and vegetables, right? Uh, what we do is we drive around local fruits and vegetables are all sourced within 30 miles. And then because it needs to be realistic for us to be able to source it and sell it and keep it fresh and make it a long-term thing. We're not gonna go 100 miles to buy you know, $24 worth of radishes, it doesn't make sense. So, and then we also, so we offer fruits, vegetables, we offer meat, which is, we'll go a little further for, because it's all USDA approved as we've frozen. So we go about 50 miles, and then we sell honey, maple syrup, uh, which are also like 50, 60 miles, because the, uh, they're just not as available on the South Coast as they are in other parts of Massachusetts. Um, so, we operate four to six stops a week, some weeks it feels like we do like nine maybe. Uh, I don't count that much because I just try to keep going forward. And then uh, I think we've done 71 stops this year starting, it was the last week of May is when we started. We do three regular stops in New Bedford. We try to cover as much of the city as we can. We're in the South End on Tuesdays from three to five. We're here on Wednesdays from three to five and uh, nine to whatever time it is today. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the north end on Belleville at Alma Del Mar on Fridays uh, from two to four. So we also do, so that enables us to have a regular presence in the city where, you know, returning customers can come where we can build, you know, the, the we can provide the opportunity and you see the, the trend grow that people are wanting to buy. One of our sites, I think the first day we set up, we did $35 in sales. Last week, same site, same time, we did $420. So it shows you over like a 10 week period, it's not that long that there's potential for growth in this. You know, one of the things that's been nice for me to see about this is that, you know, I've always liked farms and farmers and I'm happy to go, you know, write them checks and spend time with them. Although it's usually I'm in a rush and I'm late, so I can't spend that much time, <laughs> despite what Stephanie thinks, uh, is that it's proving that people want to buy it, want to eat it, right? They're spending their money, you know, we're getting snap purchases, we're getting cash purchases, credit purchases, senior coupons, WIC, everything. So like it's proving that there's a, that there's a desire, the demand is there. So that's like what I want to see is that the, the market wants local food. Uh, one of the challenges that presents is sourcing stuff and stocking it. Like, for instance, like kielbasa. Like, Rhonda's cooking with hot Italian today. We get maybe six or seven different kinds of local sausage, and I cannot keep them in stock. And they are fairly priced. You know, we're not undercutting. We never, we don't set up where there are farmers. We don't undercut. The whole thing is to support the local food economy, not to, like, you know, undermine it. So we sell at fair prices, competitive prices. And I can't keep stuff in stock. And that's a great problem, if you ask me, right? The fact that, that people are calling me and emailing me and asking, you know, when I'll have kielbasa. And I'm asking everybody I know when I can get kielbasa. Um, it's harder than you would think. So the, uh, yeah, so I lose my train of thought all the time. Uh, yeah, so we do four to five days a week, cover as much New Bedford as we can. I was trying to think about, I don't like write a lot of stuff down before I talk, and I was just trying to think about what I was going to say. And it's like we are shrinking the footprint of farms and expanding the availability that it has for people. So one of the cool things our point of sale system does is like makes circles and where you sell and the more you sell in that particular area, the bigger the circle is. And at the end of the year, you'll be able to see that all these circles are kind of tying in together. So you're reaching the neighborhood you didn't even know that you were reaching. Um, and we'll have customers follow us around, which is pretty cool. They come to different sites. One will come here and we'll see them the next day at Belleville. Um, and then we also do pop-ups, which we call pop-ups. They don't they take just as long, they don't magically pop up. Um, but where we go to sites that are outside of the city or in the city but aren't regular stops. So, and that makes up probably 40%, 35% of what we do. Um, it allows us to get in different areas. We go to Fall River, we were at the Westport Rivers Winery the other day, which is great. 
Uh, we actually have grapes from the winery, which is pretty cool. A lot of people don't know that you can buy local table grapes. So a big part of this is education, is, is providing the opportunity and awareness that people know what is available or that you can get local bacon, um, or not even like that we have uh, jowl bacon, which is from the jaw of the pig, which is pretty cool. You're not gonna go in a stop and shop and see it, but we can get it because we know the farmers. So, and it tastes delicious. Um, let's see what I got. So uh, the list, if anybody's curious of the farms that we source from for this week is on the whiteboard on the door. It's somewhere between 15 and 20 farms locally. Uh, we try to spread the wealth as much as we can while getting the, you know, the best product that's available. Um, and that includes everything from like local cookies to honey, lots of bread. Uh, what else we got? The uh, we take every form of payment. I tell people all the time I won't take Bitcoin, but I will take gold teeth, <laughs> although I won't extract it. Um, and yeah, to date we've done. <laughs> Dennis, you don't laugh at me. Um, we've done 71 stops, uh, 1,775 transactions and just over twenty thousand dollars in sales which is pretty good for considering it's been i think 14 weeks uh yeah don't it's kudos to the people that are coming out and buying i'm not i'm not spending money actually i do spend a lot of my own money at the at the farm stand <laughs> the um uh, i have one more oh so it's always i guess for me it's like an interesting part in two different ways it's the farmers that i get to i know a lot of farmers i've met a lot of new farmers which is exciting um but it's like consumers i get to meet people that want to spend their money and you'll see the same people over and over again hopefully right that means you're doing something right and there's this gentleman at our south end site whose name i don't know and we don't speak the same language but he's been coming for maybe five weeks now and he used to come at the end and he would like like the trailer is a lot of back stock and storage and he'll we'll go through the trailer and hunt for stuff because i'm usually packed up by the time he gets there and uh so i'll pull stuff out and like last week it was radishes we had not radishes since the spring they don't do well in the heat and his eyes lit up and he's like give me radishes and the uh then this week he was there early i don't know if he got out of work earlier while he rides his bike there he pulled up one of the little nips of maple syrup and asked me if it was whiskey <laughs> which i told him it was not um i told him it was for pancakes which we didn't he just kind of looked at me so we have a sampler so i went inside and gave him a sample of the syrup and his eyes lit up and then he then he said pancakes you could tell that he had made the connection to what it was uh, so, you know, having that opportunity to like, you know, be a part of someone's life, even in a small way, if it, you're improving, you know, how they eat with how they feel is pretty cool. So I'm happy to be part of the Coastal Food Shed team. And I'm glad you could all come out today. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to invite uh, the City of New Bedford, Mayor John Mitchell to say a few words. Thank you, Stephanie. I'll, uh, I'll be brief because there are other speakers and also because uh, it's excruciating not being able to eat the food that I'm smelling uh, right there, so uh, we'll make it real fast. Uh, so I, I just, uh, you know, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to thank Stephanie and uh, Kim Ferreira who couldn't be here today for all the work they've done over many years to, uh, uh, to make locally sourced food available to inner city residents. Uh, it's been uh, a big priority of mine to, uh, to bring uh, the food shed, as it were, uh, to New Bedford. And, and um, you know, when you think about it, you know, you know, New Bedford's known as uh, the, the biggest source of one type of food, uh, namely seafood in, in America, but it also sits uh, in the, the middle of um, an area of Massachusetts that is arguably the breadbasket of the state, right, Commissioner, in the sense that, you know, it, it's not just cranberries, it's not just corn, it's a whole bunch of other stuff. and uh, you know, so this is a natural place to have a, uh, a farmer's market or a set of farmer's markets or a mobile farmer's market uh, that offers uh, an awful lot uh, for folks and the, to the extent that this is made readily available uh, to different neighborhoods in the city is all, all the better. So I, I really want to thank, uh, thank Stephanie and Kim for, for all their work. I mean, they're just, they're, they're go-getters, they get stuff done and make things happen. and. You know, if you're an elected official like me or Bill Strauss, uh, you know, the, the, our job is just support and get out of their way. They'll make it happen. And so um, it's just great to, great to see. And I, I want to thank all the, the partners here. The state has been uh, a big supporter of, of the effort. Uh, Commissioner LeBeau is here, and his, uh, his team has been very supportive of, of, um, of the Coastal Food Shed and, and uh, the things that we're trying to achieve in making uh, and bringing uh, a higher level of nutrition to folks who might not readily have access to that. Uh, Harvard Pilgrim 
uh, Foundation as well played a big supporting role. South Coast Hospitals, Alma Del Mar, thank you for uh, everybody. I know I'm, I'm probably going to uh, leave somebody out uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, the accolades, but I just want to know uh, uh, Mar Marcy Pina Christian and Community Services, and John Lobo, all of you guys for uh, making things happen today. Temple Landing, the management staff here. Uh, a lot of folks to thank, and of course at the, in the state legislative level, Bill Strauss for, uh, and his colleagues from the Greater New Bedford uh, delegation supporting uh, these types of efforts. They, it's not just tastes good, but it's, uh, it is good. And uh, now that Dan has uh, piqued my interest in uh, jowl bacon, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, I'll leave the podium and just wonder what that tastes like and figure out with him where I can uh, track right some down. So I'm right over there. All right. I got <laughs> Perfect, perfect. I, I, I skipped breakfast too. Anyway, thank you everybody for all of your work. Okay, I'd like to introduce our next guest, the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources Commissioner, John LeBeau. Well, thank you, Stephanie, and good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm delighted to be here on behalf of Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito in this beautiful location in New Bedford. I'm glad to be back in the South Coast. Um, and this fits right in with the administration, tries to help build strong uh, communities, and also what our department tries to do is in promote agriculture in the state. Um, to the point that, uh, and, and I want to recognize the work of Coastal Food Shed, all the work that they've done managing the Three Farmers Market and the uh, mobile farm stand. I'm pleased uh, to inform you all that uh, uh, Coastal Food Shed recently received a $12,000 grant from the Mass Food Trust which my department uh, manages uh, to help them research uh, other means of uh, uh, food hub models that they're going to look at and see if they can expand upon the great work that they're doing. But what we have here is a farm stand that not only provides a new marketing opportunity for South Coast farmers, it also provides access, as, as you're going to frequently hear by uh, previous speakers and myself, of fresh, nutritious, locally grown food to area residents, including those using WIC, using uh, Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, and SNAP benefits. Um, as, as the mayor mentioned, uh, agriculture here down in the South Coast is a, uh, it's a big deal. It's a big part of the economy. It's a big part of the way of life. So we have uh, about 7,200 farms throughout the state, farming on about a half a million acres of land, doing about a half a billion dollars in uh, annual sales. Here in Bristol County, there are almost 700 farms um, on about 32,000 acres with annual sales of 35.2 million. And that's money that stays local. There's the economic spin-off from that that stays here in the county, uh, helping people jo with jobs, getting out that great food. And it's all part of the, uh, the, local, the local process. Um, Mobile markets are an example of uh, new marketing channels and our, and our farmers need that to remain viable. Many challenges to uh, agriculture in the state. Cost of, whoops, excuse me, cost of land, um, energy costs, those are all things that make it difficult for farmers. But what a great advantage to our farmers is the consumers that we have, the high number of consumers that we have in the state that help support this buy local activity. So uh, this is a, a perfect example of that. Uh, initiatives like the mobile farm stand open up many new avenues for our local farmers to sell their products. And in this case, with the mobile market to customers who might not otherwise be able to uh, make those purchases. Um, by these folks who, who can't travel to local farmers markets win by having um, a farmers market drive right up into their neighborhood. So in conclusion, I just want to thank everyone, uh, thank for the invitation to come here today. I want to thank Coastal Food Shed. I want to thank uh, Temple Landing. I can't, this is just a beautiful site. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the City of New Bedford, uh, Rep. Strauss and the other members of the legislative delegation, a very strong South Coast legislative delegation that uh, frequently makes me aware of agricultural issues that are concerning to them, and rightfully so, and we appreciate that. So there's been great work going on. We congratulate you all, and we look forward to much more success. Thank you. Um, so our next guest, I'd like to introduce Representative Bill Strauss. I'm not as tall as some of the other speakers. Uh, this is really exciting uh, for me to have a chance to be here today. 
Uh, I want to just uh, start by thanking the mayor uh, and the support that he's uh, provided through city uh, resources uh, to help this program, and, it, and it's been essential. Uh, Commissioner LeBeau, of course, always, always there to assist us. Uh, acknowledge Harvard Pilgrim. Uh, to have their support um, makes total sense because I'm sure you would agree an organization, a healthcare group like Harvard Pilgrim, actually prefers healthy people. Uh, they're cheaper. Uh, so it, it makes sense that they would um, uh, be a, a, such an important role in this. Uh, my own involvement, just to show you and, and offer it as an example as to how good ideas can take hold in the, the um, most interesting ways. Uh, my adult daughter lives on the West Coast, uh, has volunteered for uh, a group kind of like this, uh, where the idea is to um, uh, harvest through volunteers like herself and tons of others, uh, fresh fresh grown fruit and produce and make it available to uh, in urban areas and so she reminded me that um, uh, I have uh, uh, a public position and why aren't I doing something like that here so uh, four or five years ago and we've continued each year in the annual budget we provided about forty or fifty thousand dollars a year through the state budget to then as the mayor says let something develop let those who are local make it their own in a way that in this case is is singularly New Bedfordish and um, and draw on on the farmers and send a message locally that uh, to the population that good healthy nutritious food is grown right here uh, New Bedford has a strong history within the city boundaries uh, particularly I'm told with um, uh, fruit bearing trees in the 19th century uh, New Bedford was well known for an incredible variety of, uh, uh, of different kinds of apples. So uh, that local harvest then gets to the population and they know uh, the, the local food can occur right here. And then there's the other maybe below the surface benefit which is volunteers get drawn in and as has always been true through history, food is a positive connection for people to get together, to work together. Uh, to learn about each other and that's in every way what this program has already accomplished so um, uh, I just especially wanted to be able to be here today thank everyone involved and and help send that message about uh, the importance of a program like this and the good eating that happens so thank you very much Thank you. Um, I'd like to introduce our next guest, Executive Director of the Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare Foundation, Karen Vosey. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say it's wonderful to be in this beautiful spot, and thanks to everyone for coming. Um, but after listening to our elected and appointed officials, I think it's important to remind ourselves that um, in Massachusetts, we have a very progressive and caring group of leaders, political leaders in the state. And sometimes I think we take it for granted and we never should. So I just want to say thank you to all of you again for everything you have done and are doing. At the same time, regardless of how um, effective government is or business is, there's still a disconnect between the food that people should have and uh, their ability to get it and pay for it. And it couldn't happen without Stephanie and Kim and the team. And I just really want to say thank you to them for stepping up to solve this problem in a very local, very caring way. It's just something that I think is really not just a Massachusetts phenomenon, a New England phenomenon, but we see it happening um, across the country. And you are the local heroes of this movement. So thank you. And we're proud to support you. Thank you all. Thank you, and I know Kim would also appreciate that. Um, so I'd like to introduce Maureen Murray, um, our next guest. She is the Community Impact Coordinator here at Temple Landing, and Maureen and I have worked together close, closely over the last summer. Um, she's going to introduce our next guest as well. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you, and thank you, everyone, for coming today. It's wonderful. Um, to see all the supporters of Coastal Food Shed. We're just fortunate uh, 
to be a host. We are here, they're here weekly, every week, every Wednesday, and we'll be doing this year round and including healthy cooking classes in the winter. And it's not just growing food or distributing farm food, well, we very much appreciate it, but it's growing hearts and minds as well. It's growing opportunity. Uh, the, this gives me time to access, have conversations with the residents, find out uh, what issues are need resolving or just maybe friendly talk. I, uh, so, so this is a wonderful thing, addition to Temple Landing, and I thank you all for supporting it. Uh, I also want to thank our volunteers today. <laughs> Food brings people together. I want to thank Joyce, Maria, and Sam for cooking breakfast today. And so it does, it just helps, food helps build community. So we're going to continue with that and in helping uh, promote the increase in SNAP benefits to folks. To utilize, to stretch that dollar on a limited income, we do have disabled and limited income folks and how do we make that healthy? It leads to health, it leads to perhaps a yoga class, a, a walking group. So uh, again, thank you to all the supporters of Coastal Food Shed for offering this. Uh, I'd like to next introduce here a resident who makes full use of um, her SNAP card and the farmer's market she's here every week, and her name is Christy Pastanini, and she's just going to speak briefly about how, um, how this how affects her life. Hello, my name is Christy Pastanini. I just wanted to say how blessed I am to come here every Wednesday to... Um, shop at Stephanie and Dan's food stand here. Um, I just wanted to say how good their, their food is and how fresh it is because how grateful I am to come here because sometimes it's hard for me to get to the store. And um, I have multiple sclerosis. And um, I just want to tell how grateful and how thankful I am for them because how hard it is. I just want to thank you, Stephanie and Dan, Maureen, that I moved over here to Temple Landing in June um, because of my disability, it progressed. And um, so yeah, I just want to say thank you to all these gentlemen here because if it wasn't for you men, this wouldn't be happening for the farmers or these markets to come here um, to produce these produce. And um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody here for the breakfast that I was invited to. Thank you because I didn't have to cook. <laughs> so I hope everybody has a great day today. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, so that is it for today. Thank you for coming on this beautiful, oh, windy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. There's one more, you wanna introduce? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, sure, I apologize, uh, we're not done. Just one, la one last, okay, uh, again, uh, Tem <laughs> Temple Landing is a uh, POA community's property, which is preservation of affordable housing. We're currently in 11 states in Washington, D.C. Did I get that right, Vicki? Um, and so uh, POA Communities believes in investing in community and, and providing the resources to bring residents together and lead a successful life. So I would like to introduce Juliana Stewart, Head of Community Impact for POA Communities, to say a few words about our efforts. All right. Good. Good morning. I know everybody's dying for Rhonda's food, so we're going to keep it short. Um, so I'm here with Sophia Transformer, let her start. So good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for just coming here and just being able to celebrate this wonderful occasion. Um, like Juliana said, we are with Preservation of Affordable Housing. Um, and as many of you know, POA is a nonprofit committed to affordability, um, healthy homes and support, um, economic security and access to opportunity for all. Um, since our founding in 2001, POA has built or preserved more than 3,000 affordable rental homes in Massachusetts, including the beautiful units that are around us here at Temple Landing. Um, 
We're proud partners um, with the United Front Development Corporation, um, our partners with the City of New Bedford um, here at Temple Landing to advance our mission and to ensure that safe, decent, affordable rental homes are preserved for generations to come. Um, as we look ahead um, to new developments, we are excited to continue our partnerships with the city, um, with United Front Development Corporation, um, and just be able to increase the opportunities for renters, um, community um, friends, um, and representatives of New Bedford. And in addition to building and preserving housing uh, with folks like Maureen, um, we also run our community impact program because we believe that uh, affordable rental communities can be a platform for opportunity and amazing amenities like this um, and for building community. So shout out to Maureen, shout out to the Coastal Food Shed folks for being such a great partner. Um, other partners with us today, Coastline Elderly Age Friendly Program, the City of New Bedford Community Services. Um, as an affordable houser, we really look to partner with uh, with local folks um, to bring these great resources here. Um, and so in our community impact program, we really try to focus our work around um, a few different kind of practice areas, health and wellness, education, financial stability, community building. And what I love about the mobile farm stand is it really brings all those things together. And I, I love the things that folks have already said that I want to echo about kind of um, coming together to build community around something like this. So it's good for our bodies, good for our budgets, good for our communities. Um, and we're just excited to celebrate with you all today. So um, does this mean we get to eat we Rhonda's eat. food now? <laughs> yes, OK. Thank you. Yes, that means you get to enjoy her fabulous food. So thank you again to everyone for coming out today on this beautiful windy day. Um, so we are now going to go and shop at the farm stand and cook and eat wonderful food. So thank you again. What we're doing here today, I'm with the Coastal Food Shed and we're doing a food demo on all locally sourced produce and meats that they offer from their stand. So what we have here is Italian sausage from Revival Farm in Plimpton. And I have some produce here, tomatoes, onions, peppers, and basil. And I'm gonna be putting it together to do a warm bruschetta. And we have this lovely bread that I just cut up from the baker in New Bedford. And I'm a huge fan of his. One of the things that I use came from my grandmother and it's a mortar and pestle and I always keep it with me when I do my demonstrations because part of the charm of cooking for people is to be able to tell stories and also backtrack these stories to people that created the dish or where the food comes from. So I keep this with me all the time and it reminds me of her because I draw a lot of inspiration from my, my grandmother and her cooking. I'm using my bread knife. Sorry. <laughs> and we have some garlic. You don't want to cut your garlic up too, too tiny. Now, I'm a fan of using fresh garlic and cutting it up as you need it. You just kind of, I cut things up very, very roughly. That's because I like different shapes and variety of sizes of foods when I cook. Give it a little swirl, a little flip. And if you want to practice this style of flipping your food, fill up a saute pan with beans or rice and practice. You just keep practicing because really it's all in the wrist. You don't want to practice with hot food because you don't want to burn yourself. So let that saute for a couple of minutes. It gets nice and translucent. And then we're going to add some tomatoes. Always have a thermometer when you're cooking meat. And you want to put it in, you can get these at the grocery store. You want to put it in a slant in the center. You want to leave it in there. And when you're cooking pork, sausage especially, you want it cooked thoroughly or you will get ill. Because that happened to me. <laughs> I have a story for that. <laughs> you want to bring it up to 155. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the sausage out of all the grease and I'm pouring the grease in another pan. And then I'm going to cut this up into slices. So you see this? It's juicy and running. I always cut up my sausage just to cook it a little extra. So right now I'm adding fresh basil and since I'm Sicilian, I call it basil ago. My mother always said that, so now I say it. Any good Sicilian dish has uh, basil in it. So just to recap, garlic, onion, tomatoes and peppers. Basil, give it a swirl, a little flip, okay? And coming over here, I slice the sausage. Okay. Gonna lower that heat for a minute. Remember, I'm using this greens to put in the sausage. So it is no longer vegan. Cutting it up. And again, I like to cut up random. I cook like my Sicilian grandmother. What I did was I took the vegetables I sauteed and I had the sausage cooking and I cut it up. I drained most of the oil because you want to cut down on your oil intake here, not unnecessary fat. Um, so I combined the two, stirred it around, have some really nice bread from the baker, sliced it up, and I made a warm bruschetta little sandwich. And they make a nice little <laughs> snack or great for game day. The point is though, it's all locally sourced. Everything here came from New Bedford or the New Bedford area.